Well, today I wanted to talk about a uh, property of functional programming called immutability and how immutability helps affect um, concurrency models and you know, the advantages and disadvantages of having immutable states. You know, so they should be used in some areas and not used in others. If you remember you know, when you were back in school, they used to go in and uh, teach you the equations. Say y is equal to x squared minus 1. You did your calculation and then you figured out what y was. And that worked fine until they started teaching you to program. All of a sudden, when they were teaching you to program, what you got was x is equal to x squared minus 1. And all of a sudden, they introduced mutability into the whole equation where you had values, but then you went in and changed the values. This you know, started causing kind of confusion and because it, it's, it's wrong. It kind of you know, defies the laws of mathematics. This is wrong, you know, it shouldn't be that way. Even when you program, you should have you know, y is equal to x squared minus 1. And this is you know, an example of an immutable state. So mutability, that's the idea of something can change, right? So x is something and then it can become something else. Th that is correct. So uh, mutability, what you do is uh, you change some parts of it and you retain the, some common bits. So you know, that's mutability. You, 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 basically the value changes or some parts of that value change. Immutability, basically, you share what you can and copy what you can't. You know, that, that's a way of seeing it. Let's look at how immutability and mutability affect you know, concurrency models. concurrency oriented programming is when you have processes as your main building block of your system. And concurrence itself, you know, what you do is you, they don't have to run at the same time, but you model it that way. So they could, in theory, be running at the same time. And it's an easier way to reason and an easier way to code and program. And, and this goes um, in contrast to parallelism, where you actually have processes which are running at the same time. So see it as a subset, you know, see, see concurrency as a subset of parallelism. So there are two ways of you know, doing concurrency. One is based on mutable state, where we've got processes, and processes, usually threads when it comes to mutable state, will go in and share memory. So that means any thread you know, which has access to the shared memory can go in and edit it. And this is where you program with locks, you program with semaphores and the likes. And then you've got no shared memory, so you've got uh, con concurrency models with immutable state. And in those cases, you've got processes, and processes do not share memory, but they communicate with each other through message passing. So they communicate with each other by copying the data from one process to the other. And so now they'll each have their own copy, and you know, they're able to do whatever they want with it. So you know, the only entity, the only item which is allowed to mutate a process state is the process itself. If we're dealing with a mutable state, um, you've got a thread or a process running in a critical section, so basically writing to the shared memory. What happens if something goes wrong? So what happens if the process terminates? What you need to do is you need to go in and terminate all of the threads which have access to the shared memory because you do not know, you know what state the process which terminated left the shared memory in and it could you know, potentially be corrupt. So you basically lose everything in there. In a mutable state, what happens if a process, you know, state gets corrupted or crashes or something goes wrong with it, is that you just lose the state of that particular process, which was corrupt in the first place. All other processes are not affected by it because you know, they'll have their own copy of the data, hopefully not corrupted, and you know, continue executing. So it's a way of isolating failure. Your second problem with mutable state is, you know, where do you locate your data? You've got shared memory, where do you locate it? So you've got a process running in Nottingham, and you've got one process running in London. And they need to share memory. Where do you place your shared memory? It becomes yeah, a bit hard. Versus immutable state, where you've got Nottingham and you've got London, you don't share memory, you copy the state. So they'll each have their own copy of the data, and you can execute you know, without. So, so you, you, you're avoiding problems of locality here. Assume you figure out with your mutable state between Nottingham and London, you'll place your shared memory in Leicester. What happens all of a sudden when the network goes down between them? You know, because here in the middle, you've got your shared data. All of a sudden, you can't accept it. And there's one thing here you need to be aware of when you're programming. In life, there are three certainties. One is uh, taxes, death, and network partitions. So 
you can be sure that you know, if you've got a network, something will go wrong with it. Versus immutable state, you've got a copy in Nottingham, you've got a copy in London. So even if the network goes down, they'll each have their own copy of the data to continue running. And what you need to do is when the network does come back up, you will have to go in and synchronize the data again. And you know, there are many tools, um, distributed databases and techniques to do that. It's very clear that if we're dealing with mutable state, the mutability will work, but it will work only if you're running your threads on a single machine, so without a network, and assuming nothing goes wrong. And you know, there are many, many use cases where you need that approach, especially those use cases where copying memory is not efficient, you know, where your computations have to be extremely fast. So it, it, it's not a question of you know, one or the other, it's, it's a question very much of using the right tool for the job. And yeah, it's not always mutable state and it's not always immutable state. You know, these, are, these are the side decisions you need to make when you go along. Are there some examples of where you might choose a mutable state? Most likely, I mean, you would use a uh, mutable state where, say in the finance space, where you're doing algorithmic trading, uh, uh, computation time is critical and complex as well, where if something crashes and goes wrong, you just don't do the trade. But if you do get your results, you, know, you need to be fast and you know, you know, get, you know, execute that trade as quickly as possible, so, as, as an example. Or your rendering of graphics, for example, or you know, where you might want to split it up, but uh, you know, do, do as, much as, you want, as much as possible in parallel. So it's time, time critical, basically. Yeah. Time critical applications, absolutely, which can run on a single machine and don't need to be distributed. So l let's step back a second. Uh, you know, I've been using the terms mutable state and immutable state. Uh, you probably recognize them with the no shared memory approach versus the shared memory approach. And I think a very common you know, shared memory approach is, for, you know, for example, Java, which has threads, and the threads will go in and share the memory. And what I'm seeing happening a lot out there, though, is applying uh, techniques from immutable state to process and threads with mutable state. So what happens is that you, know, you only allow the thread, you know, which owns the data, to go in and mutate it. And, you know, and, and that resolves and addresses a lot of the issues you know, we've discussed now. So you know, it, it's, again, you know, very much the right tool for the job. So if you look at modern architectures today, I mean, everything from embedded devices to supercomputers, you know, they are based on you know, heterogeneous multi-core architectures, and most of them are you know, by nature distributed. So you know, I think you know, what we've been looking at today is basically the future of, of programming. Uh, you know, future programming languages will be concurrent. They have to be concurrent. And they'll have a concurrency model based on immutable state. So you know, immutable state, you know, being uh, one of the properties they've inherited from functional programming languages. You might not be using functional programming languages on a day-to-day -day basis, but using you know, the paradigms and the principles and adopting them uh, with, your main, with your mainstream technologies will make you a much better programmer and they'll make you much more efficient and productive. Earlier on, we mentioned, though, that immutability, there was a speed penalty, right? So how do we address that? So with immutability, indeed, you have a speed penalty. Uh, but you know, the speed penalty uh, becomes even more serious when you start looking at Amdahl's law. Um, every you know, one and a half years until you know, the mid-2000s, uh, chips were getting, you know, becoming twice as fast. Uh, then Amdahl's law, you know, because of Amdahl's law, they've hit the limit. And now you need to deal, you know, you, you gain speed through multicore. And with, with multicore programming, you need a different approach. And what you do is you start parallelizing your computations. So, you know, desktops will very soon have 64 cores. You know, we'll be seeing uh, machines with a million cores uh, uh, within our lifetimes. You know, you start utilizing, instead of you know, making one, a single threaded program which runs extremely fast, you now start parallelizing your programs. And so you, know, you start breaking up your computations into many smaller computations. And this, you know, the only way to do that is uh, concurrency oriented programming with uh, immutable state, with, with, a, with a concurrency model based on immutable state. Uh, yeah, that you, you seem to have. Uh, yeah, you seem, <laughs> seem to have 
been hung by your own, what's it called? <laughs> Busted, yes. <laughs>